let's try some examples. So, okay, first example is going to be, we are given a bunch of sentences. Let's extract the first word from each sentence. Okay, so we are going to use sentences, which is a, a, a vector that exists in the string R package. And we are saying we want to extract the first word from each sentence, right? So we are just saying match. In fact, you know, even though it says we want to extract the first word, we don't really need to use the anchor, uh, the caret anchor that it starts with, because in any case, it's going to start with, uh, you know, the characters, right? So, you know, if it begins with a bunch of white spaces, then it's simply going to ignore those and then start from where the first letters begin. Notice this one. This says square within square brackets, we're putting a bunch of things. That means any of those characters is fine. And look at how we have specified the lowercase letters a dash z and the uppercase letters a dash z plus, which means one or more, right? So the first, and after all, we know that when we do a string extract, it's going to extract the first match, right? So this is going to say, we are basically saying, consider any occurrence of lowercase or uppercase letters contiguously one or more times, right? Plus is one or more and pull it out. That's the match. Okay, so this will pull out the first word from every sentence. Okay, and then of course, this will have uh, quite a few. There are, I think, 900 odd sentences or 700 odd sentences in the database. Just to make sure that things work well, we can just go ahead to see only the top 10. Okay, so that's, that's a way to extract the, the first word of every sentence. The important point to note is that we did not use the, the anchor which is at the beginning of the sentence, because it is possible that the sentence right at the beginning has some blank spaces, right, before the first word even begins, but we want the first word, right? So we are saying, starting from the first occurrence of any lowercase character or uppercase character, pick out all the consecutive occurrences of any character, lowercase or uppercase, okay? So obviously the word may begin, and after some point, at the end of the word, there'll be a space. That is when this will stop matching. And at the end of it, therefore, when you extract it, you'll get the match, the first word. Okay. So think about it, try it, and you'll see what, what we're doing. Okay. All the words ending in ing. Okay. So we want, uh, obviously, the word. Okay. That is, it's got one or more characters. And then it has got ing. And of course, there's a word boundary. Okay, so this will extract uh, all the words which begin with, uh, which end with ing, right? All the sentences that end with ing. Okay, so string detect sentences, you've got that. And then from that sentences, we are extracting just the words. Okay, with an extract all, right? So we are doing it in two steps. First, we are getting all the sentences that contain even one word with ing. So that is going to get a string detect, right? And then we are using the, 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 the array indexes that the string detect tells us. It's a Boolean array, a Boolean vector. And then we are using that to extract all the matches of this particular pattern. Okay, we are doing it in two steps. So these are the words that we find in our, uh, in our sentences list that end with ing. So it's a little tricky to understand uh, regular expressions, but if you look at it carefully enough and if you practice it sufficiently, you'll see that it's actually extremely powerful uh, to do any kind of text processing. Let's consider one more example here. We want to consider, uh, find out all the plural words which exist uh, or, or which occur in our sentences. Okay, And just for definition, we are saying any word with four or more characters that ends in an S is a plural word. Okay, that may not strictly be correct, but uh, it'll catch most of the plural words. Okay, and we are saying it's got four or more characters because there are words like, you know, was and is and so on, which are, which end in an S but are not plurals. So we are using this crude definition. It has to have four or more characters and end with an S. Okay, so you can do this. Uh, a string extract all sentences and we are saying four or more characters, right? So that means it's got uh, a word boundary because you're looking at the word and it's got uh, three or more of regular characters and ends with an S. That is three or more characters of any kind 
and then followed by an S. Okay, so and then of course we see head and we see that that works. Let's try some examples. So, okay, first example is going to be we are given a bunch of sentences. Let's extract the first word from each sentence. Okay, so we are going to use sentences, which is a, a, a vector that exists in the string R package. And we are saying we want to extract the first word from each sentence. Right? So we are just saying match. In fact, you know, even though it says we want to extract the first word, we don't really need to use the anchor, uh, the caret anchor that it starts with, because in any case, it's going to start with, uh, you know, the characters, right? So, you know, if it begins with a bunch of white spaces, then it's simply going to ignore those and then start from where the first letters begin. Notice this one. This says square within square brackets, we're putting a bunch of things. That means any of those characters is fine. And look at how we have specified the lowercase letters A dash Z and the uppercase letters A dash Z plus, which means one or more, right? So the first, and after all, we know that when we do a string extract, it's going to extract the first match, right? So this is going to say, we are basically saying, consider any occurrence of lowercase or uppercase letters continuously one or more times, right? Plus is one or more and pull it out. That's the match, okay? So this will pull out the first word from every sentence. Okay, and then of course, this will have uh, quite a few. There are, I think, 900 odd sentences or 700 odd sentences in the database. Just to make sure that things work well, we can just go ahead to see only the top 10. Okay, so that's, that's a way to extract the, of the first word of every sentence. The important point to note is that we did not use the, the anchor, which is at the beginning of the sentence, because it is possible that the sentence right at the beginning has some blank spaces right, before the first word even begins, but we want the first word, right. So we are saying, starting from the first occurrence of any lowercase character or uppercase character, pick out all the consecutive occurrences of any character, lowercase or uppercase, okay. So obviously the word may begin, and after some point, at the end of the word, there will be a space, that is when this will stop matching, and at the end of it, therefore, when you extract it, you will get the match the first word, okay? So think about it, try it, and you'll see what, what we're doing, okay? All the words ending in ing, okay? So we want, uh, obviously, the word, okay? That is, it's got one or more characters, and then it has got ing. And of course, it's a word boundary, okay? So this will extract uh, all the words which begin with, uh, which end with ing, right? All the sentences that end with ing. Okay, so string detect sentences, you've got that, and then from that sentences, we are extracting just the words. Okay, with an extract all, right? So we are doing it in two steps. First, we are getting all the sentences that contain even one word with ing. So that is going to get a string detect, right? And then we are using the, 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 the array indexes that the string in the detect tells us, it's a Boolean array, a Boolean vector, and then we are using that to extract all the matches of this particular pattern. Okay, we are doing it in two steps. So these are the words that we find in our, uh, in our sentences list that end with ing, right? So it's a little tricky to understand uh, regular expressions, but if you look at it carefully enough and if you practice it sufficiently, you'll see that it's actually extremely powerful uh, to do any kind of text processing. Let's consider one more example here. We want to consider, uh, find out all the plural words which exist uh, or, or which occur in our sentences. Okay, and just for definition, we are saying any word with four or more characters that ends in an S is a plural word. Okay, that may not strictly be correct, but uh, it'll catch most of the plural words, okay? And we are saying it's got four or more characters because there are words like, you know, was and is and so on, which are which end in an S but are not plurals. So we are using this crude definition. It has to have four or more characters and end with an S, okay? So you can do this. Uh, a string extract all sentences, and we are saying four or more characters, right? So that means it's got 
uh, a word boundary because you're looking at the word and it's got uh, three or more of regular characters and ends with an S. That is three or more characters of any kind and then followed by an S. Okay, so and then of course we see head and we see that that works. When we have groups in our regular expressions, then we can do a little bit more while matching. Okay, so consider this example of group matches. So here we are trying to find out all the words, all the sentences that have nouns in them. Okay, so again, this is just a very simplistic kind of an approach. An actual approach has to be a lot more sophisticated. So shortly you'll see a problem. So we are assuming here that a noun is anything that follows A or B. Right, so you'll say a, a cat or the boy, right? So it's got an A or a D, and then we create a group here, followed by a space, right? So this is one of these two, it's an option because you've got a vertical bar. We put it in a group so that it becomes a group. You know, if we want to refer to it later, we can refer to it, refer to the match. And then it's followed by a space, followed by one or more non-blank characters, right? So this is within square brackets, we put the caret, which means other than, and we put a space, right? So one or more characters other than space, right? So clearly, uh, you know, as soon as a space comes, that means the, the match ends. So we are going to get the word here. So this entire regular expression will catch things like a boy, you know, the cat, and so on. It will catch all of that. So that's the regular expression. So we can now use that regular expression to find all the sentences that have at least one noun or other words that have at least a one match for this regular expression. So we are doing that. Saying has noun is sentences piped to string subset noun, noun being this regular expression. And then we want to see the top 10, so or just store the top 10. So we've got the top 10. Okay, uh, so let's see, let's do that and see the result here first of all. So here I'm defining the regular expression. So that's done here, we got the regular expression. And now let's, noun is just the regular expression. So if you look at it, of course, it's just going to contain what we just created. So now let's go and get the has noun. And we've got, so has noun uh, should now have the first 10 sentences which contain a noun. So if you look at it, you see the results look like this. So the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks, glue the sheet to the dark blue background, etc., etc. Right, so we are keeping only 10 sentences just for uh, clarity. Of course, if you're doing it for a whole data set, then you won't put this head 10. Because head 10 is going to keep only the 10 sentences. Just make it easy for us to look at. That's all. Okay. So now we can do a string extract to uh, from these sentences to extract this uh, all occurrences of this uh, regular expression now. Right. So if you run it, this is the result you see. Right. So it says uh, the smooth, the sheet, the depth, a chicken, all of these look good. The last one looks really shady. Uh, helps. I don't think that's occurring in, in any of the sentences. So if you look at the very last sentence, it says, a pot of tea helps to pass the evening. Oops. So what has happened is T, the last character is A. So it is treated at uh, that as matching A space something. A space a word and that has turned out to be uh, a match which is incorrect, right? So the method we used here of saying A followed by any number of non-blank characters uh, by a number of one or more non-blank characters, that's a noun that is obviously correct, incorrect, right? That is because, well, uh, what we would like, of course, is for a word boundary to be placed here as well, right? So that uh, we would then be able to catch the noun, okay? So we have to use the word boundary right here. Okay, so that uh, example running it revealed that uh, our regular expression was not quite right. Okay, let's assume that that's okay for the time being. So now we take this uh, sentences that have at least one noun and then we can extract the actual match, str underscore extract noun. Okay, and so that will uh, show us the actual match, and which is what we saw. We saw the results and we were in fact able to uh, find the problem from that. Okay, so group matches can also be used for other things. Uh, 
str match is another function. Earlier we used str extract in this example, but you can also use str match. What that does is it gives you the group, in the whole match, in addition to the individual groups that were matched. Right? In the earlier example which we did here, we only saw the whole match. Right? When we did string extract, we saw the complete match alone. Right? That is whatever match we had for the entire uh, regular expression. But of course, our regular expression has two groups. Right? So if you look at the regular expression right here, it's got two groups. Right? This is one group, A slash D, and then the actual noun itself as another group. So what string match does is it gives you the individual, uh, the group match, the complete match, as well as the individual groups, right? So let's see, uh, let's run that code here. So we are going to run the code with string match. So if I run it, now you see here, the first match was the smooth. That's the whole match. But then it's also giving us the individual groups. The first group was the, in this case, we said A or the. So it, in the first sentence, it matched the. And the second was smooth, which was the noun. Okay. In fact, in this case, it is an adjective. Uh, so there are lots of problems with our definition of noun, but you get the idea of generally how we are doing these things. Now, when we used str match, we saw that the result comes out in the form of a matrix, right? So that's what you're seeing here, right? So you got the smooth, which is the whole match, and then the first group and the second group, right? It's coming out in the form of a matrix. And of course, we are more used to processing these things when they happen to, uh, to look like tables or data frames, right? Because that is when dplyr is in its most powerful. And in order to get that benefit, we can use, uh, we can use this extract function from tidyr. Instead of str underscore match or str underscore extract, we can use the extract function from tidyr. Now, what this does is it allows us to extract the groups and then put those groups into named columns in the table. So let's take a look at that example, right? So here we are creating a table with, the, with one column sentence, which is all the sentences that we have in our sentences uh, uh, vector from, from string r. It's a pre-created vector. Right? So now we are using the tidy r colon extract function. And we are saying, okay, extract from the column sentence all matches of this particular regular expression. This regular expression is something we have already seen, right? We assume that it's A or B followed by some word, and we already know there are lots of shortcomings with this. Like, for example, we've not given a space before A, so it matches some odd things. And also, sometimes we get not nouns here, but adjectives. Nevertheless, let's assume that this is okay for us. So now what, this has got two groups, right? And when you use the tidy r colon extract function, it'll take the two groups and put them into different columns in the data frame. Okay, so we're going to get a column called article in which the first match goes and a column called noun in which the second match goes. Okay, so after you run this, you will get something that looks like this. Right, so this is the sentence, the original sentence. So tidy r colon extract does that. It gives the original sentence and then it gives the article, the first group in our regular expression and then the noun, which is the second group in our regular expression. Okay, so sometimes when you want to have group matches and you want to analyze things with the specific groups and you want to put them into columns of a data frame or a table, then this becomes really useful, tidy r colon extract.